nomine Padre, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So we'll hear a little bit today about um, Saints Felician and Primus, uh, and something of the importance of uh, so understanding the character of others. Uh, Felician and Primus, these were two brothers in the early church and patricians who had converted to the faith and devoted themselves to caring for the poor and visiting prisoners. Um, in the old Roman Empire, a, a patrician uh, was, kind of as the name implies, like a father to a father of Rome, uh, like founding fathers, I guess is what it would be, like a family name that had gone back uh, you know, to around near the time of the founding of Rome. So very, very uh, high profile uh, nobleman in Rome that had converted. <clears throat> so they, um, <clears throat> they're caring for the poor, visiting prisoners, doing these good works. And, you know, similar to Christ, you know, with the, with the um, uh, Pharisees, he says, for which, which of my good works do you stone me? Uh, they were arrested and put in prison. Why? Uh, not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You will not sacrifice to the gods. Uh, so they were imprisoned together uh, and scourged. And uh, each of them uh, were separately brought before the judge. And the judge told each of them, you know, your brother apostatized. Um, he's given up the faith. You know, just he, he, you know, we're, we're, we're going to treat, we're going to deal with him leniently. He's going to be set free. You know, don't don't be the one that, that you know deprives your brother of of your, your your presence. So he tried to convince each that the other had apostatized, and they wouldn't buy it uh, because they knew each other's virtue. They said, "No, nope, I don't believe you for a second. My brother would not do that." Uh, and that's the difference, right, between, between the, those who have the faith and those who don't. Those who don't have the faith, they don't get it. Like, they don't understand how deep the faith really goes. Uh, but for those who do, especially when you, when you know somebody's character, um, there's a certain point to where um, you would say, uh, when somebody has this kind of a virtue or this amount of virtue, that vice is just unbelievable. You just, you just can't believe it because you know their character. Uh, so they, they rightly refused to believe each other. They knew each other's virtue, and so they each were subsequently beheaded. And these brothers are around 80 years old at the time of their death. And so that's, that's the important thing to know about virtue. And, um, you know, I always go off script, but I'm really going to go off script this time. Uh, when you know somebody's virtue personally, certain accusations become unbelievable. And there's, I think, a priest we all know quite well, who used to be the pastor here for about 15 years, uh, was accused of something quite terrible. And um, for, for myself, I, I think for many, I mean, I would, anybody who knew him, the accusation after like a moment's reflection was unbelievable. Uh, because, you know, there are certain things that are so, um, that are depraved, like there's bad, there's things, people who are bad, and then people who are depraved. There's like uh, vice, and then there's malice. Uh, you know, and, and I think Fulton Sheen would, uh, uh, he told a story in which he kind of made this contrast, and he said, you know, bad people are people who, you know, they steal, they get drunk, uh, you know, they're lazy, they, you know, you know, they commit sins of, you know, impurity and so on. Like, everybody's prone to this. Those are natural vices, which, which even people of good virtue, uh, good and solid virtue, they can slide into sins of weakness. That's, that's, not, that's not unusual. Uh, but sins of malice, sins of depravity go beyond that. Uh, and there are cert there's a certain kind of a wickedness which sees goodness in others and wants to uh, ruin it. It sees um, innocence and wants to take advantage of it. It sees uh, a purity and wants to, to, to destroy it. Uh, so that's a kind of a depravity which, which exists in certain sins. And when somebody uh, who hasn't even exhibited vice is accused of depravity, you just can't believe it. Because look, by your, by your fruits you shall know them. You know, can, can, can figs come from thistles? You know, does a bad tree produce good fruit? Likewise, a, a bad tree is not, a good tree is not going to produce bad fruit. And, and that's what you get when, when somebody whose entire life is regulated and ordered and disciplined, you know, you can, you can believe a sin of weakness. All right, I understand. You fell into this or that particular sin. That's natural. That's normal. But when that person gets accused of depravity, that's where you, two and two just don't add up. 
and you, you know something's wrong, especially when the people making the accusation are the ones who very well are likely to be in the midst of depravity. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, Providence, Rhode Island uh, is the San Francisco of the East Coast. That, that's like the cesspool of homosexuality. And if you want to see depravity, that's what homosexuality is and it does. Um, you know, uh, uh, the, the vices of, of, of the inversion of the natural order, uh, the inversion of the desire of the sexes instead of for the, for the other, it's for the, the self, that's a depravity. And once you're at that level, other depravities have an inroad. And you can very much get into the kind of malice and hatred and spite and wickedness uh, which are, are just despicable, uh, including wanting to ruin the, the reputation, the virtue, and the purity of another. So, uh, and that's why it's such a vice in the church. Uh, and even, this is, this is the thing, people don't know what they're capable of. You have to be very careful with sins you think aren't a big deal, they can end up becoming a big deal because you don't know what else is connected with that sin. And it's like that for these, 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 these poor people that suffer from same-sex attraction. If they give in to that, if they yield to that, that's an inroad for all manner of depravity, murders, um, and uh, 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 defamation, and um, exploitation of the young. We'll, we'll say it that way. Uh, people don't realize if, if they yield to this perverted disorder desire, other desires are going to grow and they'll be surprised at what they themselves do. I remember talking to uh, this, this person, um, and I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't an evil, but it was, it was um, a vice that he didn't see coming. And uh, the person, I mean, all, he was telling me what's going on. I'm like, ah, oh, do you not see what's coming? Do you not see what's coming? And he finally tells me, I couldn't believe what I was about to do. It hadn't happened yet, and he, he, was, he had put himself into that position, and suddenly he was confronted with it and knew he couldn't resist the sin. It was there, it was available, and he indulged in it. And that's very sad. Um, so, so be very careful. Uh, you know, know what virtues and vices, it's, they're, they're, not, they're never just individual by themselves. They're all connected, both vice and virtue. And um, it's kind of like the, like the, I think the analogy the fathers make is the five fingers on a hand. You know, they, they all grow together. And yes, you've got some fingers longer and some fingers shorter, right? You can have some virtues and some vices more or less than others, but they, they all are connected. They all go together. Um, so, I mean, I would say that, that uh, on two hands, be careful of ourselves, all right? Know, know that our vices, they may, they may be more far reaching than we think but also perhaps we might be able to be more virtuous than we think if we had just uh, maybe put a little more effort into it and say, you know, I've never thought about maybe improving the way I speak to each other. I'm gonna give up sarcasm. I'm just gonna stop being sarcastic uh, with people. You, you might be able to do it. You don't know until you try. Uh, and, and, and so on, other things. You know, I'm gonna speak more kindly. I'm just gonna eliminate uh, foul language from my vocabulary. I'm not gonna re you know, rely on these uh, four letter words for, for humor or emphasis. I'm just gonna stop using foul language. Uh, you might be able to do it. So, so, so give, give yourself this, this ability both to, to, to explore your possibilities for virtue and also uh, keep a healthy, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, suspicion of your own proneness to vice. You know, we don't know what we are. T two things, we don't know what we are until adversity shows us. As Thomas Akempis says this in an imitation of Christ. Adversity comes, we're down, we're not feeling good, we're stressed, and that's when kind of like, we don't know what we are. Our, our real self comes out. Also, we don't know what we are until opportunity shows us. Never had the opportunity to sin, now it presents itself because I wasn't careful. I can't believe what I'm about to do. So be careful and don't let it come to that point. Uh, work on your virtues, work on your vices. Uh, this is a good time to do it, right? The season of the Holy Ghost, Pentecost, make use of those virtues, uh, ask the Holy Ghost for his inspiration. Uh, and I'll, I, would, I would leave you to this, be very careful about anybody who says something wicked about a person of good character. Even if it's you yourself, right? You see something, you suspect something, you begin to be suspicious about somebody's virtue and character, be very careful. Uh, withhold judgment, um, it's better to think well of a, of a bad man than to think evil of a good man. Uh, that's Thomas Aquinas. The, the one is an injustice, thinking evil of a good man, that's injustice. Thinking well of a bad man, well, maybe you'll help them to become better. 
Uh, so I ask the Holy Ghost for that inspiration. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.